Hello and welcome to this uh, Dev Diary of the month of June for Interbellum. It's to me, Aramasi! Uh, yes, I am aware that I'm about two days early, but I am just, this is my day off, and if I don't do it today, it'll end up being about five or six days late, considering that I have, like, seven days of work ahead of me. Yay, America. Um, so, as you guys know, in the month of, uh, April, we were basically planning on doing a revised version of our Phase 3 test, and most of you know that that kind of went... Um, I won't really go into the full detail because Azza himself has already wrote everything on our, our lovely Discord that you guys are welcome to go and, and read yourself. Um, but I will add some more information to it as in a way that explains how the project works. Um, as you guys are aware... Um, Last month, I was talking to you about the difference between, like, the core server, the Mythic database, and the Interbellum database. Um, how we normally make this function is, for example, what you're currently seeing on screen is a local shard. It's basically a, uh, a very stable version of the core server that other people can't connect to. Um, what this allows me, me to do is to go in and design things that do not require C++ coding, um, which is the vast majority of the things that you guys will actually see and have been seeing. Um, so things that require database work or ability system work or client work, I can work on those and adjust those using this. While Azrael works on the core development, so he can basically make it an unstable version that he's currently working on to adjust something without affecting me, and I can make an interbellum database with between myself and other people who give me coding to go towards that, like Kep, um, and I can make sure that when he goes to run a test, that he's got a stable version of the interbellum uh, code. Uh, and... We do this because, obviously, if we were all just working on the same test server, then if something went horribly wrong on either one of our part, major component parts, the other one wouldn't be able to work. And I've had someone, there was someone who asked before um, about contingency plans related to that. I can tell you that the vast majority of people, almost all of our code has... Um, at least three people uh, in different departments whose responsibility it is to um, like to basically have access to the code, which means at any point in time, somebody, uh, if someone were to die or leave the project or name purpose, uh, we still have access to uh, every single component of the project, of course, right? Um... My, the server that I work on, because obviously I never have any people on it, has a whole bunch of stuff like this where you can, you know, have a little uh, cannons that I can shoot uh, in order to test to make sure things work. What you guys are currently seeing is just some uh, rune scrape, rune. Ooh, a rune scribe. Jesus, I can talk. Uh, rune scribe stuff showing that we do have the depleted rune systems that make you unable to use your abilities whenever you got that. Um, I do have some information, or I made one, here it is. Uh, so, because the current Phase 3 was not something that we had planned, right? So I, I wrote that in the announcements, but I'm going to give you guys some more information. <clears throat> um, basically, Phase 3... Phase 4 is what we originally were going to do, Phase 3, back in, like, late January, early February. Uh, now Phase 3 is related to this. Um, so, as I stated in announcements, Phase 3 is going to crash a lot. Um, basically, uh, the goal of Phase 3 is to get a server that is stable, people can log in without any issues. 
Um, and we'll move to stage four when basically a certain number of testers, which will be defined by development, um, can stay online on the server for a minimum of one hour uh, without it crashing. Um, because Azrael has been busy the last week, I haven't actually been able to fully flesh this out uh, because he's been dealing with wedding-related stuff. Uh, so that will this will probably change. But I was just giving you guys, you know, a, a, something to look at to show you that we do have um, a direction that we're taking. I know we don't we don't we don't I know we don't normally give ATAs and we don't give we don't normally give this stuff. But I am doing it because we are in testing phases and I want my testers to know what they can expect as they go forward. Um, so phase four testing part of it, like the initial components of phase four will be basically tacked on to phase three. Um, this is because under most circumstances, I can run the interbellum database, um, while we are trying to figure out, um, things on the, uh, core side, um, during phase three testing, if any point in time the interbellum database is interfering with that, we do have a uh, tier one database that we know for a fact is 100% solid. Um, that's based off of like Mythic's abilities in 1.4.8. Um, and um, so most of the time we'll be using interbellum database for tier for phase three, um, but we will on occasion have to swap over. Uh, if we are unlucky. Um, right. Oh. Yeah, the, um, yeah, so I'm currently waiting on Azrael to give me the go-ahead on whether or not, or, or when the next fate test for that is going to be. Um, he did write some public information right here. Uh, regarding to what that will be, uh, related to the fact that he, uh, has an issue with the, when abilities are using their effects that the server crashes. Um, if I remember correctly, I won't pull it up because that is, uh, proprietary, but in the issues of the actual core database, I'm pretty sure he said that that's going to have to rely on a test. So I can imagine when he gets back from what he's currently dealing with in his personal life, um, with the wedding related stuff, uh, that I will get some more information and can give it to you guys, or he'll just give it, give it out to you guys. One way it really don't matter. Uh, he is a lead of development. He can talk. Um, I just primarily do most of it, uh, for the project as the project lead. Um, but yeah, uh, back to, Phase four, I mean, we are, uh, I do have a list of what order I'm basically be going to give people's, like, hard specializations for. Uh, there's a mostly, there's a pretty good reasons for this. Um, first off is the art department originally wanted to do something, uh, related to Dawi versus Greenskin. So, of course, the first set of classes were all, dwar you know, dwarves and Greenskins. Um, so when we first start testing, literally everybody's going to be an Ironbreaker or a Fida, um, which will look funny on videos. Um, there will be a punt test in that on purpose, um, to get variances and punting, uh, because punting in, punting in, uh... Warhammer Online isn't like a distance. It's actually a power level, a power level, a angle, and a gravity setting. And I originally, back in phase two, <clears throat> did one of these punt tests for people. Um, but I'm just making sure that the new core server uses the same values that, uh, the server we used in phase two did. Uh, and I probably should have set this character up before I uh, did this. 
Uh, but, uh, blah, 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 blah. but yeah, if it's the same, then it, the test won't take too long as, uh, I basically already know what values I want to use, but it will be kind of funny for players to just be able to massively punt each other around, um, uh, repeatedly, um, on the server. Uh, after that, we've got the uh, Grenadiers and Biggins uh, for some DPS, because obviously a whole bunch of tanks running around probably won't kill each other a lot. Um, using Grenadier uh, Engineer first rather than Rifleman, even though Rifleman is the Tier 1 version, simply because... Um, I don't want to deal with the turrets right now. That That's pretty much it. Um, then you've got Rune Scribes and Shroomancers, uh, which will... We've got to have healers, right? And then the last ones were the Skaven Slayers and the Shootas. Uh, then, past that, um, you get both melee healers on each side. Um, you get the first component to showcasing... Uh, the Cor Chaos Corruption System and the Marauders. Uh, you get the Brawler version of the Swordsman. You get the, of course, the... Basically the Bright Wizard and the Sork, as people know it, since Pyromancer and Dominator of Ogul are as close to old-school Bright school Wizards and Sorks as in the past. Uh, then you get two more tanks, um, with Chosen being able to use their Chaos Corruption that Marauders are spreading. Uh, and then swordsman just swordmasters just coming with them because the knight actually pairs with the sword instead of with the chosen. Uh, then you get another set of uh, ranged healers, some more DPS, then the, then the R system, um, and last but not least the pet classes. Um, each class of visual we only get given one hard specialization uh, because I will be testing them with the entire tree already purchased. So, for example, like this character has Band 5, Engage 3, uh, Improve Block 5, Crump 3, Save Me, Hide 4, Stop Mucking About 4, and has literally every single ability. Um, and that's not normal. Um, but so we're going to be testing that way with each specific class um, first thing, just because I need to make sure everything's functions and everything is fun. That's actually kind of what Stage 4 is about, is making sure things are fun to play and that they function and there aren't any bugs um, in the way things actually work. We're not particularly concerned about balance, especially, definitely not in Phase 3, uh, but as we go into later aspects of Phase 4, we will state when we're actually caring about whether or not the numbers that are coming out of these things are correct. Um, there is a whole bunch of math related to them, but of course, the best plans get shredded as soon as they meet the enemy, right? Um, the last component of Phase 4 that we plan on doing is scenarios. Uh, this is basically kind of development dependent, um, but once development is ready and after each initial class has been released to players, uh, we will um, open up... We'll open up, um, we'll start running scenarios. Um, and the purpose of those is so that we can use our scenario, uh, test our scenario philosophy and make sure that design the scenarios the way that we want to. Uh, it's for them to actually be appropriate. Um, which you guys can find in our public releases, which I'm sure I can find eventually. Uh, archetype. I love the... Really? Come on, never mind. Um, well, yeah, that is essentially what we're, we're going to do. Stage 5, Phase 5, I'll talk to once we get closer to it. Um, but, yeah, that is where we are, are as of April. And what we're going into, at least for design and development into June. I said that wrong. April and May into June. There we go. But yeah, I think that pretty much does it actually. Yeah. All right.